And joining us now from Miami, Remy Pierre is a research associate at the European Union Centre at the University of Miami. Also in the studio is Ansgar Graf. He is a senior political correspondent for Germany's Develt newspaper from Paris. Yasser Luati is a French human rights activist and Erin Zaleski is the Paris correspondent for the Daily Beast. Welcome to you all. Let's start in Paris. Erin, uh, what a 24-48 hours. It's been quite incredible. Let's start off with the victor, of you, if you like, of this first round, Emmanuel Macron. President. I want to be president of all the French people, of patriots in the face of nationalist threat, a president who protects, transforms and builds, who allows those who want to create, innovate, do business and work to do so more easily and more quickly, a president who helps those who have less, who are more fragile. Aaron, listening to that clip, and Macron, you know, out of nowhere, established his own political party six months ago against Le Pen, a far-right candidate. These candidates do not represent uh, the French establishment. What's the mood there in France after this incredible election? It is really extraordinary because, like you said, the, these are two candidates. They're both outsiders. They're not a part of the political system. And I think French people for a while have become a bit disillusioned with mainstream politics, so that could be one reason for this. Uh, yeah, so let, let's bring you in. You're also from Paris. Uh, what's your thoughts, especially on Marine Le Pen, uh, far-right candidate, anti-EU, anti-immigration? Uh, now she has a chance to be the French president. Uh, well, first, I got to answer to what, I, what has been said right before me. Uh, Emmanuel Macron actually comes from the establishment. He was trained at the INA uh, School for the Elite. He was, you know, the secretary of the Elysee. He was a minister for Francois Hollande and worked for a big bank, the, the, bank, uh, the, the Rothschild Bank. So he definitely represents the system and has been actually uh, co-opted and supported and endorsed by the likes of the right and the left as well. Now, speaking about uh, Marine Le Pen, yes, we have Marine Le Pen, but her, her ideas have been in power for many, many years. We shouldn't forget that under Francois Hollande, we have had policies resembling more the right and the far right than anything so uh, socialist per se. For example, the drastic security measures, delve, delving into identity politics, the Burkini hysteria, discrimination, racial profiling, etc., and even widespread uh, mass surveillance and violations of civil liberties. Now the choice being offered to the French people is choosing between, on the one hand, fascism with Marine Le Pen, mm. and on the other uh, uh, unapologetic neoliberalism with Ma Ma Emmanuel Macron. Erin, uh, I wanted to pick up on that. Um, what's the view in Paris about Le Pen and how she stands for the second round? Because it seems in her speeches, especially her acceptance speech, that she's moving a little bit to the middle. She knows she has to court outside her base. Is there a chance we could see something like Donald Trump uh, here in the United States? Oh, I think there's absolutely a chance. And there's, there are two things to consider. First of all, there are the undecided voters who could be swayed either way, or the people who maybe didn't vote in the first round, but who may yet vote in the second round. Secondly, there are the uh, Fillon, that's the conservative candidate who lost. There's the Fillon voting base and the Mélenchon, the voting base from the far left. And the Front National, the party of Marine Le Pen, is going to try to court both of those voting bases in the coming days. Uh, Remy, let's have your view because you watch uh, the European Union a lot. Le Pen is the candidate that is the most anti-European Union, and it seems the French establishment, uh, as Erin uh, just said, uh, is coalescing around Macron. Do you think that's enough? Do you think uh, Le Pen will be stymied? What I find is very interesting is that we actually moved away from a sterile left versus uh, right uh, political debate to something that is more, much more interesting, which is whether or not you're a Europeanist, globalist, open to free trade, open to the rest of the world, and trying to make France succeed in, in, in the global world against an isolationist view and, and a protectionist uh, that would actually be detrimental in the long term to the, to the European economy and the French economy in particular. Uh, what you've seen right now is both candidates trying to go uh, a little further than their, than their political basis, but clearly, I mean, it would be extremely unlikely to see Marine Le Pen uh, win the second 
second round because most of the other uh, leaders uh, gathered around Macron, which is much more, let's say, sensitive and, and makes much more sense and well trained. I mean, even if you can call him from the establishment, he's actually been well trained and has some kind of experience of how to run a government while the other political platform is actually not, you know, even scientifically rigorous. Uh, Le Pen will try to bridge across to the Fillon voters through the Catholic uh, base. Mm. She's going to try to bridge across to the Mélenchon voters with a, a, a view of anti-EU, but she has actually no serious uh, political economic platform that would be in the best interest of France. And Scar, we've heard this before here in the US, haven't we? You cover the White House. Uh, you became an international right. uh, reporter, hero for asking questions that others didn't ask uh, uh, Donald Trump. What's your view? You're Germany. You were for Die Welt, next door to France. Uh, this is really, really important what happens in the next couple of weeks, right? It's important, but nevertheless, I would say it's all over. But the shouting, she will lose the election uh, in, uh, on the 7th of May. Uh, he will win. Monsieur Macron will win since all the other... Uh, party leaders uh, will endorse him, and uh, that's it for the moment. But uh, we don't, uh, we shouldn't forget, uh, he will become president, I bet on it, uh, but then he has to deliver. He has to do some very important reforms. He has to get uh, the, the France uh, system in shape. He has to make some uh, big uh, spending cuts. And if that doesn't happen, he has also to deal with a, with a crisis in regard to, to refugees and to, to migrants and uh, with a terror threat. If he can't deliver, five years from now, Marine Le Pen could win the election. And I think uh, the, uh, there are two very important takeaways from this uh, first round of the election. The, the first one is that both uh, leading uh, parties we are not able to get into the into the uh, final uh, round. Mm -hmm. Although it was quite close. I mean, Although it was, it was yeah. quite close, uh, but uh, that's uh, like uh, China wouldn't participate in the world championship in table tennis, also, <laughs> or, okay. or the United States wouldn't participate in the basketball uh, World Cup, also. <laughs> Good analogy. Well, it's, it's the first time since the founding of the so-called Fifth Republic in mm -hmm. 1958 that both party, not the center left socialist and nor, nor the center right uh, conservatives, didn't make it. The second very interesting takeaway, in my view, is we are regarding and viewing the crisis of socialist parties all over Europe. Uh, the socialists in France only made 6%, and same happened to the socialists in uh, Netherlands mm. uh, in March, 6%. Nearly the same happened to PASOK uh, party in Greece some months ago, in, uh, in, in Spain. The socialists made 22% last June, but that was the worst uh, outcome for, of their history. And in, in Poland, for example, uh, the uh, socialist parties are below the 5% hurdle. And Scott, uh, that's a very good point. Let's bring up uh, Erin back in here, because do you see um, the French political climate basically ditching the left like we have seen elsewhere? And do you give uh, Marine Le Pen a, as little chance as Ansgar said. I mean, seeing her election victory rally, if you like, uh, in a small town, it sort of reminds me of the US dynamic, where Macron had the big cities, uh, she had a lot more of the rural vote, more difficult to count, more difficult to poll. Uh, what do you think? I think you're absolutely correct. And we saw a similar uh, upheaval with Brex first with Brexit and then with the election of Donald Trump in the U.S. People during the, the campaign uh, in the U.S., people were saying that Trump didn't have a chance. And I think up until the end, people were putting their stock in the polls and still pretty much up until the results were announced, people were saying it's, it's impossible for him to, to win the election. And then we had this vast upset. And I think that a similar thing could happen here. And I, uh, time, time is going to tell. It's very difficult to call right now. The polls are saying no. The polls are putting Macron in the lead. And up to this point, they have been correct. But again, I wouldn't rule out a similar upset to what we saw in, in Britain and in the U.S. earlier. Uh, you're shaking your, your head uh, there, Remy. Uh, weigh in. Well, actually, I mean, uh, it's extremely unlikely that Le Pen will win the second round. But I, I mean, that's not 
that's not essential. What's also very interesting to look at is, is whether or not she loses by, you know, by, with 25% of votes or 45% of votes. That is the big mm. difference here. Uh, whether or not she will represent the, 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 the opposition to uh, President Macron for the next five years and, and will actually establish herself uh, pushing even you know, further backwards the Socialist Party or the Republican Party. And that was extremely interesting to listen to uh, the positions of different uh, uh, politicians uh, yesterday night trying to support Macron against the fascist uh, uh, ideology of, of Le Pen, but also trying to already try to say that they're slightly different from the position of Macron to establish themselves as, a, as, a, as an opposition. Just after the uh, presidential elections, we're going to get the general elections with, for the National Assembly, and, and uh, Emmanuel Macron doesn't have a party. Uh, he is trying to invest to, to uh, uh, have a series of different candidates um, from the civil society, yep. but he will need the support from traditional parties also to rule and have a government. Remy, I'm glad you asked that because I want to ask Yasser there. So going back to the graffiti uh, comment, remember we, the, the National Front had described Macron uh, uh, 2017, Le Pen 2022. Um, you know, he does have to govern Macron if he whatever he gets. Uh, he doesn't have a party. It could be that. Uh, the prime ministers from a different party, uh, that he only ha really has control of a foreign policy the way the French electorate is governed. Could that be, uh, again, a sign that France can't move on without some sort of break? Uh, actually, uh, first, let's you know, uh, recall the figures. The, idea, the Le Pen-like ideas represent about 46% if you count Le Pen, uh, François Fillon, and uh, Nicolas Dupont-Aignan. That's 46% that weigh on the general, that will weigh on the on the upcoming election. Mm. And we have seen Emmanuel Macron is basically spineless. He, he tried to appease as many people as possible. He changed position on various issues. For, for example, randomly speaking here about, you know, colonization, laïcité, etc. He kept going back and forth. That might be his weakness. That means he will have to build alliances and therefore accept whatever is being imposed upon him because he will be under a time crunch for the parliamentary elections. As for the, uh, the, um, the Marine Le Pen case, we shouldn't forget that she quickly reminded where she, where she came from when she said, for example, that France was not responsible for rounding up 12,500 Jews in 1942, saying that you know, the Vichy government was not France in order to remind what, what her, uh, her electoral base, what, uh, what she really stands for. As for her okay. so-called so anti-EU positioning, well, I'm sorry, she's still, you know, sitting at the European Parliament and taking European, uh, European Parliament money as, you know, and even being sued for, uh, for, uh, for corruption and for misusing yeah. uh, EU funds. Okay, Just yes, one sir. last point, please. Yeah. Uh, regarding the socialist candidate, we, we, we spoke about 6.8% for Benoit Hamon, but that's because he was boycotted by his own party, just like Bernie Sanders and Jeremy Corbyn. Most of the leaders of the Socialist Party went on to join Emmanuel Macron, and that's okay. why the Socialist Party today is dead as we know it. Uh, uh, thanks very much, especially getting in the weeds of uh, French politics. We don't always hear it on the shows. It's really important. 